Go. Okay, today we're going to be looking at esters. And all we're going to be trying to do today is to be able to name esters and to be able to make some in the laboratory. We're going to actually look at the reactions of esters tomorrow. So don't worry about that. So really all we're looking at is the stuff on page 99 in your, in your book. First thing for us to know is our functional group, which is one you met last year, so it shouldn't be new to you. What's really important to work out is which part came from the alcohol and which part came from the carboxylic acid when you look at these. Because they're not always written this way. Sometimes they're written... the other way around. And you need to know which part comes from which reagent. So that's one of the key things to notice. And in assessments, they can write them either way. Um, remember that our R group can be a carbon chain, or if it's on the carboxylic acid side of it, it could just be hydrogen, because it could be a methanolate or from methanol. All right, so that's recognising what the functional group looks like. You're looking for that COO group in the middle of an organic compound. So there's a carbon chain basically either side. If you see that, you know you've got an ester. Naming them is probably one of the more important things for us to do for today, so that we then can go on to name the ones that we make from our variety of reagents that we've got. So, if we have a look at this one here, you've got a CH3 just bound to an oxygen, and you've got a CH3 and a C bound to two oxygens. The one that's bound to just one oxygen came from an alcohol. It's effectively a side chain, so we name it as a side chain. So what we've got here is a single carbon, so it's going to be methyl. Then we have a look at the rest of it, and it's CH3COO. And we've met that before when we did carboxylic acids. It's the conjugate base of the carboxylic acid. So therefore, naming that one shouldn't be too hard. Two carbons, so it starts with the prefix eth, and then if it's the effectively the conjugate base of the acid, it becomes ethanoate, so the way that you'd name the conjugate base, the iron, the, uh, the ethanolic, sorry, ethanoic acid would make. You'll see in this one here, I'm throwing you a bit of a curveball, it's not written the same way out, written out the same way. We've got the CH2, CH3 bound to the oxygen on the right hand side. So this is the part that came from the alcohol. So in this case, it'll be ethyl something or other. Ethyl because it's got two carbons. Then if I have a look at the part that's got the two oxygens bound to it, that's got three carbons, make sure you remember to include this one. It's one of the mistakes I used to make when I was at school, is I always forgot about the carbon that's actually bound to the two oxygens. So it's one, two, three. So here we're going to be looking at propanoate. Right. That leads me to how they're prepared. I've sort of suggested that in saying where the name comes from. We've got an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. That's one way to make them. That's the way you're going to do it in class today, mainly because I don't want you to use the alternative, which is acid chlorides, because they give off hydrogen chloride gas, which is not particularly good for you. So you need to know both methods, and you need to know the advantages and disadvantages of both methods. So I'm going to go through both of them, starting with the acid chloride one, actually. So for this example here, ethyl methanoate, regardless of what we start with, we're going to have ethanol from the, from the ethyl bit. And in this case, we're going to be looking at methanoyl chloride. So to understand why this works, it's probably best to do an equation. So I've got methanoyl chloride, so the, the acid chloride version of methanol, uh, methanoic acid. 
and I've got my ethanol. What's going to happen when these two react is the HCl gas is going to be liberated or, or given off. And so that just comes from here. And what makes this the preferred way, if it was safe enough, is that this is a reaction, it's not an equilibrium. Okay, it's a forward reaction only. The alternative method is to have ethanol plus methanoic acid. So same idea, I'm going to do the more abbreviated structures for this one. Here. And what's going to happen is that water is going to be removed. But in this case, it, it doesn't just go in the forwards direction. It creates an equilibrium, which means that you have to drive that water off somehow to, to force this in the forward direction. The last thing I'll say is that when you're doing this second procedure here, you should do it under distillation. And we're going to have the gear to do that today. You're going to do it under distillation because the reaction requires heat energy to occur. And we use distillation, not reflux, because the, the product that we're making has got a low boiling point. So therefore, we can collect it once it's made, while the reagents will keep uh, recondensing and keep on reacting.